Hello students, hope you all are doing great. Welcome back to our botany class. Today we will discuss paper 3, Pteridophytes, Paleobotany, Environmental Biology and Phytogeography. This is for BSc third semester students of Bangalore University. We'll discuss Unit 1, Pteridophytes today and our emphasis will be on the reproductive features of Selaginella. Before we study about the reproductive features of Selaginella, we must know its morphological features as well. This was done in your previous classes. So just quickly recap. This plant body is a sporophytic one. It's a sporophytic plant body that is differentiated into root stem and leaves. The leaves are dichotomously branched. This dichotomy is an important feature here. The stem is dichotomously branched bearing leaves. The leaves are microphyllous, similar or dimorphic and bears ligule. That means these are ligulate leaves. The roots are adventitious in nature and are dichotomously branched. Rhizophores are positively geotropic. These are leafless structures, colorless and branched in nature. Homophyllum and heterophyllum species are there. That means what? Homo means similar, hetero means different sizes and shapes of leaves are present. What are the objectives of this lesson? The objective, the primary objective is to help students gain an understanding of the unique morphological anatomical features associated with Selaginella and the transition to heterosporous trobulus with micro and megaspores. What will you learn after this particular session? What will be the outcome? The outcome is expected to be like the outcome is expected to give you an overview of the complexity in morphological, anatomical and reproductive features in Selaginella. Now let's come to the reproductive characteristics or reproduction of Selaginella. Selaginella reproduces vegetatively by means of tubers, bulbils, dormant buds and fragmentation. Tubers appear towards the end of the growing season. They may be aerial, developing at the apical end of the aerial branches or subterranean. Under favorable conditions, these tubers germinate into a new plant. Okay, so these uh, tubers are found in Selaginella chrysocollis. Next, coming to bulbils. This is also a very important uh, vegetative reproduction coming to dormant buds. Dormant buds or resting buds, these are also known as resting buds. These are compact structures which develop at the apical end of some aerial branches. Okay. And finally coming to fragmentation. Under humid condition, Selaginella rupestris, it is, this is found in Selaginella rupestris under humid conditions or damp conditions. Uh, the trailing branches of the stem develop adventitious branches. Now these branches later disjoin from the parent plant and develop into separate individuals. Okay. Sec asexual reproduction takes place by spores. Heterosporous type of plants. Heterosporous means what? Two types of spores will be there. One is microspore which are smaller in size, the male counterpart and megaspores which are larger in size and are the 
female counterpart. These are used for angiate uh, spore plants. These are used for angiate spore uh, plants means what? They hear the sporangia arise from multiple epidermal cells or several epidermal cells and not from single one, single cell. If it is developing from single cell, what do we call? We call it leptosporangiate. Use sporangiate for several epidermal cells and leptosporangiate from single epidermal cells. Now, the spore bearing organ is called sporangia. The singular form is sporangium. Sporangia are dimorphic. That means what? Megasporangia and microsporangia, both of which are born in the axils of sporophylls. Megasporophyll for megasporangia, microsporophyll for microsporangia. Both the sporangia are born in the axils of the leaves. Just now I have said. Sporophylls are organized into strobili at the apical end. These are the strobili, singular strobilas, and they are present at the apical end, not here at the basal part, at the apical end. The sporophylls are spirally arranged around the central axis of the strobilus. If you imagine a central axis like this, you can see this cross, crisscross arrangements of the sporophylls. So, okay, this, this is called a spiral arrangement. Most species show micro and megasporangia in the same strobilus. Okay. Now, location of sporangia varies in different species. Megasporangia at the base and microsporangia at the upper region. This feature is seen in Selaginella rupestris. In Selaginella krausiana, what do we see? We see single megasporangium at the base and the rest all are microsporangia. Yet something different is seen in Selaginella inaquilifolia. Microsporangia on one side and megasporangia on the other side. In Selaginella gracilis, what do we see? Micro and megasporangia on separate strobili. So far we have seen in all these three, uh, they are in the same strobilus. But here in gracilis, what do we see? Selaginella gracilis, the micro and megasporangia are born on separate strobili. Okay. Now we will move on to the diagrammatic representation. These are longitudinal sections of the strobilus. Let's quickly learn a little about the mega and microsporangium. Let's start with microsporangium. Each microsporangium here is a stocked globular or elongated structure. See if you can notice the stock. The stock is here. Globular elongated structure. Its color varies from red, yellow to brown in different species. You will not be able to distinguish the color over here, but just keep in your mind. The wall is bilayered or two-layered thick, which is followed by a conspicuous tapetum. Note, it's a bilayered structure. See, over here. In the young sporangium inside the wall is present a mass of sporogenous cell. This is your mass of sporogenous cell that is found inside the sporangium which in due course of development separate into microspore mother cells and later on by meiotic divisions produce numerous haploid tetrad of microspores which at maturity separate from each other. These dotted structures are your microspores. At maturity, the tapetal cells as well as the inner wall of microsporangium disorganize. That is the wall of the sporangium, usually one layered at maturity. So this bilayered thing, they become single layered at maturity. Okay, then we'll move on to the megasporangium. Each megasporangium is also a stock 
structure but here you can see lobes present it is a lobed structure okay it is bigger than the microsporangium its color varies from whitish yellow to red its wall is also two layered like that in microsporangium and followed by a single layer tapetum in the young sporangium inside the wall is present a mass of sporogenous cells which in due course of development separate into megaspore mother cells okay all the megaspore mother cells normally degenerate except one so one remains functional while the rest degenerate so this gives you a clearer picture these are the small tiny microspores with the microsporophylls this is your large lobed megasporangium with the megaspores the megasporophyll try to correlate to this picture with what i have said just now for a correlating image in your head then only you'll be able to reproduce reproduce that in your answer script fine remember one thing as the position of sporangium is either colline or foliar initials are either situated on the axis or on the leaf respectively the development of sporangium and formation of microspore that is micro and mega spores is similar up to formation of spore mother cells the development is of u sporangia type just now i was discussing this that is it takes place with the help of a row of initials which are known as sporangial initials now coming to sporangium the sporangia has a stalk and a double layered jacket to it hmm? the jacket has got outer columnar cells which is chlorophyllous that means it can prepare its own food the inner layer got, has got tangential cells to it the microsporangium is small dark brown to red in color with many tiny microspores the megasporangium on the other hand is large lobed structure it has got four lobes green to orange color with four megaspores the dehiscence occurs here by vertical splitting from upper end into two halves coming to gametophyte or prothallus microspores are small they are produced in large numbers they are pyramidal in shape thick with a thick exine and uniform in time male gametophyte develops within the microspore wall produces spirally uh, coiled biflagellate anthrozoids the megaspores are large in size and normally there it is it occurs within a range of 1 to 4 in number megaspores are large triradiate ridge at apex with a thick exine and uniform in time now look at this picture megaspores germinate within the megasporangium forming female gametophyte bearing archegonia this thing this structure see water is essential for fertilization where else have you heard this before this we have studied this in bryophytes right water is essential for fertilization young sporophyte is attached to the megaspore sporophyte falls on the ground and becomes independent when will it become independent once it produce roots so this is a vivid picture of the life cycle of selaginella please note this very carefully everything what we have discussed so far is given in this diagrammatic representation next we'll come to some multiple choice questions okay 
Fern having sp uh, sporangia that arise from a group of epidermal cells are known as. We had just now discussed it is eusporangiate. And what is it known as if it comes from single cell? It is leptosporangiate. Okay. Th these questions for are for you to take a self test. Before like looking into the answer, you should give it a try. Try to solve these questions without looking into the un highlighted answers so that you know, you, you can self-evaluate yourself how much you have learned, how much you can retain after a day or two. So this MCQs are given to you for your self-evaluation purpose. Next, see an evolutionary important character of Selaginella is what? It is something related to the heterosporous nature. Then let's see sporophylls are organized into sporophylls are organized into what? They are organized into the into a Strobilus. The leaves which bear sporangia are called, of course, you know, sporophylls, microsporangia associated with microsporophylls, megasporangia associated with megasporophylls. Innermost layer, the nutritive layer which gives nourishment is known as tapetum. It's neither known as exine nor placenta, nothing. It is known as tapetum. Would, I would suggest you to browse through these references. This will give you a better picture of what we have discussed just now. So, thank you so much for your kind attention. Please feel free to get back to the teacher in case of any doubt, any confusion. And again, I'm telling, try and solve the questions that are given. Read the text thoroughly. Okay. Thank you so much. Goodbye.